Hello, my name is Sam Zatar and I'm here to share with you some of the information that we've discussed in the course at CAPS Institute in Dubai in the last couple of days in a course directed by Professor James Pritcher in their clinical endodontic diploma program. We've enjoyed talking during this course in the last three days, and we have one more day to go tomorrow. The part I chose to discuss with you today here is the pulpal biology, the pulpal diseases, because this is one of the very important aspects in endodontics. We as clinicians, we need to understand what happens inside the dental pulp. And that was very well illustrated. I'm gonna share with you here tonight, very quickly, how I see this subject here. Now, let's identify the pulp. Let's, the pulp is highly vascular connective tissue. People think that the pulp is unique for long times because First, they thought that the connective tissue of the pulp, it's a highly vascular connective tissue, and that is cells, fibers, neurovascular bundle, lymphatics, and I make uh, excrements on this, and all are floating in a colloidal substance, interstitial fluids in particular. So, having this been said, the point that this tissue is confined in a closed system because the boundaries of the heart dentin all around it. And that makes it unique. But guess what? This is not the case. There are three places in the body that does share, that do share this phenomenon. One of them is the bone marrow. The second one is the nail bed. And the third one is the brain. That's another sort of confined connective, some sort of connective tissue in there. So why is the pulp unique then? Maybe because they thought there was no lymphatic drainage inside the pulp. Why do we need to know if there is lymphatic drainage or not inside the pulp? I'll tell you why. If you look at the inflammation of the pulp, is whenever you have an inflammation, you have the vasodilatation and extravasation and so forth, and the fluids will start coming out of the blood vessel, right? And that within the confined system will create pressure. And this is where the patients start feeling the pulsating type pain. So where is this fluids are going to go? Now, I think it was either Van Hassel or Tornick, I'm not sure, probably it was Van Hassel, who was able to identify the lymphatic drains inside the pulp. And the importance of that, of course, what they did is they did the pulpal exposures and then they, they placed the dye and they were able to isolate the dye on the lymph node. So there was direct communication, definitely there was a lymph node inside the pulp. Because before, earlier, there was a story talking about self-strangulation theory, that the fluids will keep forming inside the pulp until they sever or block the circulation and the pulp will like a suicide pulp. It's a self-strangulation theory. But then this has been not really an accurate term because the pulp does have a capacity to recover. Healthy pulp does. Okay, so let me summarize this in a very easy, simple way. If you look at the pulp, at, if you look at this example here, a sink and a tap of water is open and the water is going down the sink. Usually the water will drain simply or peacefully or easy if you have two things. If the, the tap is not open too much, you don't get too much water coming, and that is in clinically, that would be the amount of insult, okay? So the more insult you have, the more water is coming out of the tap, the more chances for this flu these fluids to accumulate within the, the confined system of the pulp chamber and the root canal. 
okay? On the other hand, where is the equilibrium coming? It's coming from the drainage. And if you have the drain of the thing is okay, then the pulp will be able to survive that insult. But again, this part here was discussed by Marwana Burras at USC where they came up with the, what the term that we all know in the field of endodontics, stressed pulp. Means, and that's for the young generations, whenever you're drilling a tooth, you want to make sure that it doesn't end here. Every time you drill the tooth, you're causing an insult to the pulp and they never recover back as they were before the insult. So if you look at, you do a filling and the filling breaks and you do a filling again, each time you're doing that, you are adding to the stress of the pulp. And this is where they came up, Marwan came up with the term stress pulp back in the early 80s and we all still use that in the literature until now. So this is, comes with the histology of the pulp, of the dental pulp. But hey, what about the biology? When we say the pulp is vital, we are looking at circulation. None of the tests that we have, except the, the oxymeter, the laser, I don't even remember the names. It's very, now people are trying, there's laser Doppler flumetry, yeah, that's what it is. People are trying to, I don't know, it's very expensive and I'm not sure it's not my field. So I'm not sure that we are yet, I think probably it has to go with the cost. It's very complicated and I think at one time they even tried to use an uh, electrode or pod to try to measure the temperature of the pulp. So like instead of having a reading for pulp tester, you have a reading for the temperature of the pulp. But again, the sensor would have been very sensitive and I think their efforts failed in that direction, okay? So what about the pulp tester? Pulp tester is one of the very valid uh, tools that we use to help us diagnose the pulp. That's correct. But you have to understand that there is a challenge here. The pulp tester works by electric excitation of nerve endings, not, not, not circulation, not blood vessel. This is gonna make a difference Yes, it does. You know why? Because the pathology now comes on board and adds up to our problem here, and that is the nerve tissue resist autolysis. So whenever you have an, an, a necrotic process or an inflammation that is leading to necrosis in the pulp, you may lose circulation, but because of the nature of the nerve tissue, they, they are still in the process of being autolyzed or being washed away, and then you will have a response from the pulp tester, while on the, other, on the same hand, you don't have circulation in there. Okay, so that's the end of our problems in terms of the challenge in diagnosis. We have one last problem still. Uh, last problem in terms of uh, the pulp diagnosis because we have a lot of other problems and so many other things, but this is not the issue here. The last problem here is the anatomy. Anatomy, when you have a multi-rooted teeth, each one of the canal, m canals might be in a different stage or circ of vitality. And it's been shown in a number of studies that you may have a vital tissue in the mesial canal and a necrotic tissue in the distal canal. And when you go in there and you apply it or tests, more likely you may get a response because of the stimulus while you have necrotic tissue somewhere in the canal. So these are the four challenges that we know when we in terms of diagnosing pulpal diseases. Maybe later if you have time, we will be able to discuss the specific tests that we use to uh, try to identify the pulpal inflammation thing. Okay, we'll do that in another clip. And uh, thank you very much. And I think tomorrow we're gonna finish the, we're doing the rotary and the course that I've told you about in, early in this video. We'll do the Pro Tabor uh, Gold uh, rotary system by then Supply Serona. And it's just, I'm not saying this is the great system, but this is what we are, well, this is what 
uh, is adopted for teaching on this course, although the students use love so many other things. Okay, and uh, promise we'll try to do this probably in Arabic for my Arab, my Arabic followers, my Arab followers. And uh, I think I'm going to have to do like everybody do that. Please show me that you're interested for me to do that in Arabic or to get you the, uh, the one with the, the clip with the clinical or different uh, diagnostic tests that we need to do in order to hopefully, hopefully reach the right diagnosis. Again, thank you very much. I'm Asam Zatar. Please follow if you're interested. Thank you very much and good night. Salam.